Welcome to a brief presentation of the TED Community Experiment. Here I want to give you a brief overview of the theory behind the experiment, as well as to hint towards some interpretations of the results. Remember you can check the experiment's results in the presentations I posted below. Once again, thank you very much for participating. This experiment is based on Thomas Schelling's work in game theory, for which he won the Nobel Prize in Economics in 2005. In 1957, Schelling published an article in the first issue of the Journal of Conflict Resolution called Bargaining, Communication and Limited War, in which he treated the issue of coordination problems. So what is a coordination problem? Well, imagine you want to meet with a friend in the city and that there are three places where you could meet, the park, the mall or the square. A coordination game is one in which you want to do something as long as the other player does the same thing. This is a pure coordination game, because both you and your playing partner have the same preferences for each outcome. You both win if you coincide in the same place. The main characteristic of a pure coordination game is that there are many equilibria, or what in game theory is referred to as Nash equilibria. And of course, the question is, how do you and your partner coordinate to select the same outcome? How do you coordinate on the same equilibrium? The easy answer is that you talk to each other. That's why communication exists. But what if you cannot communicate? What if the lines are broken? What if you are faced with a tacit coordination problem? Game theory has traditionally engaged this problem by asking what would rational agents do? And has treated this problem as one in which the solution is embedded in the formal, mathematical structure of the game. On the other hand, Schelling engaged this problem by asking, what do real people do? Do real persons coordinate in these kind of situations? And if so, how can they do that? In this sense, we can see Thomas Schelling as one of the forefathers of experimental behavioral economics. So Schelling set out to ask people what would they do if faced with these kinds of tacit coordination problems. For what he devised a set of games in the form of questions. And he found out that people do manage to coordinate. Here's how he put it. People can often concert their intentions or expectations with others if each knows that the other is trying to do the same. Most situations provide some clue for coordinating behavior, some focal point for each person's expectation of what the other expects him to expect to be expected to do. Finding the key, or rather finding a key, may depend on imagination more than on logic, may depend on analogy, precedent, accidental arrangement, symmetry, static or geometric configuration, casuistic reasoning, and who the parties are and what they know about each other. He concludes that poets may do better than logicians at this game. But what does this mean? Some theorists have conjectured that the emergence of focal points in pure coordination games has something to do with culture, with the social norms and conventions of a particular group of people. The TED Community Experiment is set out to test that conjecture. The TED Community Experiment is designed as a replication of Schelling's classic coordination games, but with a sample of culturally diverse subjects. In this way, we might be able to answer an important question. Can people from different cultures coordinate without communicating? This is where the TED community comes in. I had to find a way to ask the same set of questions, slightly modified versions of Schelling's original questions, to a richly diverse group of people. And that's precisely what the TED community is. Our sample thus comprises men and women of all ages with different educational backgrounds, dedicated to varied activities, designers, educators, artists, community organizers, actors, entrepreneurs, students, publicists, politicians, and whatnot, all of whom share an interest on ideas worth spreading. Here's a graph showing the nationalities of the experiment's respondents. I know you won't be able to see the labels and numbers of these and the following charts very clearly, if you want, you can check them out in the presentation I posted below. I just want you to see the diversity of the sample we managed to gather. We have people from 47 countries, spanning all inhabited continents. 
And here we can see the cultures with which they said they identified themselves. English speaking, different European identities, African, Middle Eastern, South and East Asian. As you can see, a rich diversity. So, can people from all these cultures coordinate in shelling situations? Here's the question that was asked before people started playing the game. And in what follows, you will see the results. Don't mind about the labels and the precise numbers. Remember, you can check them out in the presentation I posted before. Just watch how the focal points emerge. Name heads or tails. You win if you and your partner name the same. A focal point emerges with heads. Check one of the numbers listed below. You win if you and your partner succeed in checking the same number. A focal point emerges with 7. Does the focal point emerge due to the order in which the numbers were presented in the game? Choose one of the 16 squares in the image displayed below. You win if you and your partner choose the same square. Focal points emerge in the top left-hand side, bottom right-hand side, diagonal, and the upper right-hand side quadrant. You are traveling around the world and you agree to meet with your partner in a capital city. Before you can agree in which capital city you will meet, communication is lost. Both of you will have to guess where to meet and will have to try to make your guesses coincide. Which capital city do you go to? Paris and London emerge as clear focal. You were told the date, but not the hour, of the meeting of the previous question. The two of you must guess the exact minute of the day for the meeting. At what time will you appear at the meeting city that you elected? In this question, 12 o'clock is the intercultural focal point. Write a positive number. You win if both you and your partner write the same number. 7 and 2 emerge as focal points here. Name an amount of money. Imagine that if you both name the same amount, you can have as much as you named. A million dollars emerge here as focal point. You have to divide 100 into two piles labeled A and B. Your partner also has to divide 100 into two piles labeled A and B. Imagine that if you put the same amounts in A and B that your partner does, each of you gets 100. If your amounts differ from his, neither of you gets anything. How much would you put in each pile? 50-50 is the focal point. You and your partner parachute unexpectedly into the area shown below, each with his map and knowing that the other has the same map, but neither knowing where the other has dropped or able to communicate directly. You must get together quickly to be rescued. Name the location on the map where you would go. Here, the bridge at the center of the map emerges as focal. Finally, I divided the respondents into two groups to test if the level of coordination was affected if they knew they were playing with someone from another culture. Interestingly, the significance levels of the statistical tests revealed that there was no such effect. The levels of coordination were the same for those who were just told they would play a coordination game and those who were told they were playing a coordination game with someone from another culture. But notice, when you check the results, how some of the answers vary between the two groups, hinting that coordination is achieved by varying the strategy when playing with someone from another culture. So at least within the confines of the cultural diversity of the TED community, people from many cultures can coordinate without communicating. Thus, doubt can be cast on the conjectures of some theorists who have attributed focal point coordination in games such as Schelling's to cultural factors. Maybe there's something more universal implied, more natural, or maybe the TED community exemplifies an emerging global culture. Particularly in international relations, thinking about environmental protection agreements, international justice, or global regulatory frameworks, or when thinking about the prospects of designing institutions for increasingly culturally diverse societies, the possibility of intercultural tacit coordination in remaining open suggests that the doors are not inherently locked for constructive deliberation.